The ethanol industry takes its responsibility to public safety very seriously. We've got a great public safety record. But as the industry grows, we want to make sure that first responders have the information they need to address any issues that may arise as ethanol is shipped across this country. Ethanol is a fuel derived from grains such as corn, wheat, and switchgrass. It provides our nation with a renewable source of energy that is used today in vehicles coast to coast. During 2006, the domestic ethanol industry produced approximately 6 billion gallons of ethanol and was blended into 46% of our gasoline supply nationwide. There are projections that ethanol could be blended in almost every gallon of gasoline sold in the U.S. by 2010. With the current rapid growth of the ethanol industry, firefighters, hazardous material specialists, and other emergency response experts have become increasingly concerned about the lack of consensus with regard to how to best fight a fire involving a large volume of an ethanol blended fuel. In the following minutes, you will see how frontline responders can maximize their chances for success and minimize their risk with the necessary knowledge and tools for how to combat industrial polar solvent fires. To better prepare to respond to an ethanol fuel emergency, it is important to understand the process by which it comes to market. Ethanol's journey usually starts in our nation's heartland, where the grains from which it is derived are grown. Here the grain is harvested and delivered to an ethanol production facility where it will be processed into ethanol. At this point, the alcohol is denatured with up to 5% of a hydrocarbon like natural gas liquids or gasoline. This denaturing process makes ethanol unsuitable for human consumption. The ethanol, now referred to as E95, is then shipped to a distribution terminal by unpressurized rail car, tank truck, or barge. At the terminal, the fuel will be pumped into a storage tank. Final blending with gasoline into E10, 10% ethanol, or E85, 85% ethanol, occurs at the loading rack where tank trucks are loaded for final distribution to the local gasoline station. Okay, this is the ethanol unloading station at this facility. It's located under their truck loading rack. The tanker with the ethanol pulls into this bay. It hooks up this line and can also hook up a second line with that hose to his tanker. And these pumps will pump the ethanol out off the truck and out into the tank in the tank field. Here at the terminal, the ethanol is blended into gasoline for use in private and commercial vehicles. At this facility, E95 was most commonly blended with gasoline to make E10, or a mixture of 90% gasoline containing 10% ethanol. This will also be referred to as gasohol. Once a tanker is filled with blended fuel, it may depart for almost any destination within the region. With terminals located throughout the U.S., truckloads of ethanol blended fuels are likely to be found across the land. Members of the bulk liquid terminal industry, many of whom we represent, are dedicated to conducting their operations safely and to preventing emergency situations before they can occur. Our industry holds a focus on response capability to the eventuality of an emergency, including tank fires. In 2006, general industry response preparedness to ethanol was being evaluated, prompted by the increasing volume of this fuel being handled here in the United States. Diverging opinions surfaced among the leading authorities on how to carry out an effective response to a large ethanol fire emergency, particularly the type of foam which is able to extinguish a large-scale polar solvent fire. This uncertainty led to the formation of the Ethanol Emergency Response Coalition and this foam study. To find the answers that emergency responders and the industry need, a specialized test facility was required to carry out the necessary analysis. The Tyco Corporation provided their experienced chemists and scientists and the use of their Anfield Fire Technology Center in Marinette, Wisconsin, to test the varying foams available and extinguishment methods using established test standards and methodology. What makes us unique among, among others is the Fire Technology Center where we are performing these tests, not just in our world-class classroom uh, facilities, but our ability to um, run fires of all types of different fuels and firefighting agents. Uh, we have the ability to uh, set indoor and outdoor fires up to 
approximately 3,500 square foot in area and test all sorts of different fire extinguishing technologies and agents on a variety of fuels. We were able to conduct large scale fire tests, the UL versions of fire tests, up to as much as 100 square feet in our fire test center. Our fire test house is basically 75 by 65 by 55 feet in, in height, width, and uh, length which gives us essentially a, a very large chimney in which to conduct fire tests. And in there we are able to, to burn uh, any number of fuels that um, might need to be tested. And what we've been able to do this week is conduct fire tests using E95 or denatured alcohol and gasohol, 10% or alcohol and gasoline. Okay, I believe it's very important that everyone understand but the testing is being done on phones is what's referred to blind testing. The container is a white pail. It's only marked with A, B, C, D, and E or F. And the container then is marked 3% or 4% or 6%, whatever percent the phone is to be used at. The testing was conducted over a two-week period starting in February 2007, strictly following the Underwriters Laboratory 162 test methodology. The first step in the testing process is premixing foam solutions to their specified concentrations in water. The general types or families of foams tested included alcohol resistant aqueous film forming ARA triple F foam, a traditional aqueous film forming A triple F foam, a class A foam intended for fire involving ordinary combustible or class A materials, an emulsifier, a conventional fluoroprotein foam and an alcohol resistant film forming fluoroprotein AR triple FP foam. There were three foam application scenarios used for the UL 162 test type 2, type 3, and sprinkler application. Every test consumes 55 gallons of fuel, and for this study, both E95 and E10 were tested. The fuel must be a minimum of 50 degrees Fahrenheit before ignition. Once the fuel is ignited, a 60 second pre-burn period begins. The pre-burn allows the volume of the fuel to heat up or become fully involved. In a type 2 application, the nozzle directs the foam concentrate stream against a vertical surface or wall of the fire pan opposite the nozzle, creating a more gentle application on the surface of the burning fuel. In a type 3 application, the foam stream is directed onto the burning fuel surface, plunging and submerging into the fuel when applied. The sprinkler application, which is most common at industrial truck loading racks, was tested differently. With only a 15 second pre-burn, the sprinkler system is activated, providing another approach to a gentle application. In each of the three application types, if the foam was able to extinguish the fire, it was put through a burn back test. According to UL standards, the last corner of the pan to stop burning is to be used for the burn back test, as this is the most likely place to see failure. The technician scoops out a portion of the foam blanket and lights it on fire. This test evaluates the foam's resistance to fire. After the UL designated waiting period of five minutes, the foam blanket is inspected. If it has deteriorated by 20% since reignition, the foam fails the burn back portion of the test. If the foam does not lose 20% of its coverage within the time limit, it passes. The chemical makeup of all of the fuel used for these tests was verified in the laboratory. There were 43 individual tests conducted on both denatured ethanol, or E95, and E10 gasohol. With a type 2 or type 3 application, there was a one minute pre-burn before foam application would begin. With a sprinkler test, the foam application started within 15 seconds. Using the Type 2 application, only one of the six foams was able to extinguish and pass the UL-162 burn back test for a denatured ethanol fire, alcohol resistant ARAFFF. Alcohol resistant ARFFP foam extinguished the E95 at an increased application rate, but did not pass the burn back test. None of the foams without an alcohol resistant polymer in the AR prefix were successful extinguishing a denatured alcohol fire in accord with the UL-162 test method. None of the foams extinguished an E95 fire with a type 3 application and only the ARAFFF was capable of passing a sprinkler application. 